<sighs> Getting too old to crawl around on the ground. Well, hello there. I am resurrecting my strawberry hanger project, but doing a few revisions on that. Um, as you may recall, a couple of years ago, I did a whole series on some hanging systems that I was going to keep the strawberries up and out of the way uh, during the off season. And unfortunately, that didn't quite work out as well as it was supposed to. So I'll leave a um, link to that down below if you wanted to see how that whole project worked out. Now originally with this new project, I wasn't going to uh, video the uh, progress of it. I was just going to do one video showing the overall. Um, but as I go along, I start documenting things. I put little pieces together here and there. I figured I'm going to make a video out of it. So we're going to go uh, once again into great detail of my whole thought process of how this all uh, is going to go together. It may not be for everybody, but I do have a lot of people that really like to see um, what's involved with uh, coming up with a new design for something. So I hope you enjoy these and thanks for hanging out for the ride. As you may know, I do have a Patreon page. Um, I have a couple of top contributors that I like to give a shout out, and they are trueaquaponics.com and glassbottleoutlets.com. With the support through Patreon, that allows me to help fund some of these uh, crazy projects that I like to work on, and hopefully it benefits everybody. Now one of the reasons why I want to get them out of my deep water culture beds is because once the growing season is done, um, these plants are just wasting space that could be used for growing other things. So if I can get them up and out of the way um, into a smaller footprint, um, that will have much more value to me in the long run. Um, all this space that's currently being used could be growing lettuce or something and be productive throughout the whole season. Uh, right now, once spring is done, um, these plants are just going to sit here and continue to grow and get ready for next year. So it's essentially it's a huge waste of space. And if I was doing this from a commercial standpoint, um, it would be more economical to grow lettuce uh, because I can turn those much quicker than uh, just doing a couple week season of strawberries. My original plan for the strawberries was to try to get them up out of the way during their non-fruiting season since they waste a lot of space. I was doing a little research and found this dry cleaning system on eBay and started thinking that maybe I could use something like this to get the plants up and out of the way but then have them move around and then come down to a person level height so they could be picked or cleaned up or whatnot. So I started uh, doing a bunch of different designs uh, pursuing this avenue. The idea was to have a rigid track shown here in black suspended from the greenhouse rafter and then use a tram with cable system to pull the tram cars around and each car would have a bunch of plants in it. I was thinking that I could put the water in up along the top which would give it some weight and then as they move downhill that would actually self propel the whole system and at the lower end the water would get uh, removed. So then going back up the hill everything would be a lot lighter. So essentially sort of how a large water wheel would work. I did spend some time designing this up and designed a little tram car, did some experiments and the overall design of the car is pretty good. It needed to have three wheels to keep it contained on to the track and then uh, cable interconnecting everything together. I had also done a quick modeling of how the assembly would look inside the greenhouse just so I could get my space set up. Drew a little human in here and showed how it would all be overhead and suspended above the deep water culture beds. And by the time I was done with getting all the wheels and having the sheet metal bent and whatnot, each of the carts was going to cost $25 a piece and with the track and the bull wheels and everything else I was looking into several thousand dollars to put something like this together. So with the number of plants that this held I was estimating about $6,000 to put this whole thing together to hold maybe four or five hundred plants so we're looking at ten to twelve dollars per plant uh, for that initial investment. It'd be pretty cool to have something like this working but it's just uh, not going to work out. 
This is a photo of my grandfather taken over 50 years ago in one of his greenhouses that we called the wheelhouse. It had a bunch of Ferris wheel style systems in it used to help maximize his floor space. So I'm going to take a little inspiration from his old designs. Instead of a singled wheeled system, I think I'll try a double wheel system which will allow me to go a bit higher but keep a smaller footprint. It's essentially a chain and sprocket but instead of an actual chain, I'll use some wire cable. In this case, the wheel will act as a sprocket and the supporting bars will sit into an indent in the wheels. On each crossbar, a plant hanger with gutter will be able to freely hang. I'm still planning on filling one side with water at the top, then have it drain to the bottom. This should still provide a water wheel effect to make it self-propelled. One other option with this design is that I could possibly install another set of wheels and fill some of the lower spaces of the greenhouse. But I'm not going to add that level of complexity to this first build. Rough design just so I could lay everything out and figure out my spacing a bit. It's definitely not complete. Like I didn't draw on the bottom wheel or the left side and didn't put all the strawberry plants in. Mainly because it takes forever to render everything once I get that many leaves in there. But it gives a good idea of what I'm attempting to do with this. So here we have a bunch of plants in here. They're sitting in a gutter and then this tray is hanging on this bar that goes all the way across. And then the bars are all interconnected with cables, which I didn't feel like drawing in. And they ride in this track on each of these bull wheels and are pulled along in these slots. So let's take a look at this in a little bit closer detail. Here's the end of the hanger rod, which is a piece of half inch conduit that I'll crimp down to a flat piece and then that will have uh, two bolts going through it with a washer plate for lack of better words or a crimping plate that will then crimp the cable onto the uh, conduit and each of these also would have a uh, nylon lock washer on it just to keep them from working off so I have some redundancy built into this because I do not want this coming off the cable so there's lock washers and two nuts on here with that crimp and plus the cable goes between the two uh, nuts so if they did ha one of them happen to work out it would not uh, allow that cable to move left or right on here and keep everything on track so hopefully that's enough redundancy uh, this plate i could have just used the two washers in here but the plate if i have a bunch of them made up they're less than two dollars a piece something like that out of stainless steel i can have them laser cut so to me, it's worth it just to have the, the right piece in here versus uh, wrestling with a couple of washers that uh, may or may not uh, crimp this properly. Okay, so here is the crossbar sitting in the wheel, and there's simply an indent in here, and then some tracks on the outer part where the, the cable will go in. Again, I just drew the cable in straight. I don't have it conforming to the, the wheel itself. What will happen is that the edge of this will be pushing along the uh, bar, so the wheel itself won't be acting as a bull wheel, which would be gripping a cable, normally like a ski lift would work. It's more of a chain and sprocket type system where you can imagine that this is the chain and then the sprocket itself is the wheel itself. And so the edge of this will push it against the edge of the wheel. And that's what will drive the whole thing is this point pushing against uh, this point. I made up a quick prototype just to see how some of the pieces go together like i said earlier i'm gonna make up a square washer for this but this one i just used two uh, washers to hold the cable in and this is uh, one sixteenth inch uh, stranded stainless cable and it's not quite rated for what i'm going to want so i'm going to go up to 332nd just to increase that weight a little bit more but overall uh, this looks pretty good for how it's going to hold everything together. I did pull on it pretty good in a vise and clamps and that cable's not going to slip anywhere. So having that extra piece in there will ensure it's definitely not going to slip. I also printed out a section of the wheel itself just so I could see how everything will fit together. And so that piece goes into there. You can see it sets right into its little spot and the, the cabling will ride along inside of this groove that will keep this from wandering back and forth by having that cable contained in there. And then 
as the wheel turns it will just pull against um, this edge of the, uh, the cross brace. Let's take a look at the overall hanger system. The hangers are set up so they're spaced at 14 inches on center and that's based off of my fine strawberry plant simulation to let the berries dangle down a bit and keeps them from interfering with the plants in the bar below. And there's also plenty of airflow around this to make sure that the berries don't grow much mildew. It can be very difficult with strawberries um, to keep them dry enough to prevent the mildew. So I think this should uh, work fine. There isn't a whole lot to the hanging trays. It's essentially a gutter that I've set up. Let's turn off our plants. So here we have our gutter with an end cap. And then there's a piece of half inch conduit with a tubing connector pounded into it. And then I can just run a bolt through a custom made hanger bracket that will screw it all together. For experimenting, I 3D printed out a bracket. Now this type of material, the PLA is definitely not strong enough to support everything, but it works great for just general testing and layout. And here's one of the legs with the nut pounded into the end and then I can just do that and screw it on to the end cap. So that will give the, a space for the tray to sit in. And so here's my sample gutter and then that just sets into here. Now a couple things to note is that because of the end cap is pretty large the gutter sits down uh, crooked into here so I'll probably have to add a couple of collars onto these just to help support that a little bit but I can just take some PVC piping and cut those and put them over that so that's not a big deal. I'm still working on the design of how to get water in and out of these trays so that will be coming up at some future point. Alright I think that's a good stopping point at this point. I have a lot more work and design work to do so hopefully what I've pieced together makes some sense and you have an idea of what I'm working towards. So looking forward to getting this put together, um, hopefully by the end of the season so I can get my plants transplanted into there. Once again, thanks for watching.